Hi, I'm Sylvia Russell, an Applications Engineer with Dimensional Control Systems. I'm going to do a walkthrough of the model variant function, which is available in Variation Analyst and MVM. Uh, here's what we're going to talk about, so let's get started. I am going to demonstrate with uh, this model. Uh, model variance is a tool to make it easy for you to switch between different move tolerances or measure configurations. I'm going to dem be demonstrating with 3DCS Variation Analyst uh, running NX. Uh, here's what the dialog box looks like. Uh, rows. Rows represent moves, tolerances, or measures that you would like to uh, Select between variants. Columns represent the different variants. So, for example, this first column, labeled whole slot, will activate the cover to base move. And the second column, labeled four holes, does not use that move, but does have these other two moves activated. Uh, this is an opportunity for model reuse or auditioning multiple proposed changes to an assembly that already has tolerance model for one configuration. Uh, this is what the ribbon menu looks like for NX. Um, you can see this uh, model variant icon is identical across platforms. Here's what the model, another, the model variant dialog box looks like. Uh, in the upper left, we've got a button that allows you to add moves, tolerances, and measures from your model navigator. Uh, here's the list of MT moves, tolerances, and measures for this particular model. Um, we have some buttons to apply a selected variant to the model. That is, deactivate, activate these four, deactivate those. And you can copy one of the model variant columns to create additional variants. Uh, each column represents a variant, so we've got two right here. Uh, what I'm going to demonstrate is uh, we've got a current cover design in teal that uses a hole and a slot to locate the cover on a base with four pins. Uh, we've got a new proposed design here in orange with four identical holes, and this one is going to be cheaper to manufacture. Now, uh, flushness between this edge and the base is Im important for function, and we'd really like to know if that flushness re requirement can be met with this new part. Uh, here's in more detail. The two parts are assembled, and we've got this one edge that we're interested in uh, maintaining plus or minus 1.25 flushness. Um, I've got measures at each corner. All right, let's switch over to NX, and we'll, we'll demonstrate the model. Well, as I promised, this is NX, and here's my CAD. This is our uh, current design of the cover, and here's our base with the four pins. Um, instead of bringing in a second cover, what I've done is uh, created four coordinate points to represent four identical 21 millimeter holes. This is my original move, uh, feature move using this big flat surface as primary. Uh, the hole is the four-way locator and slots the two-way locator. So that simulates our base configuration. I've also got a different set of moves uh, this is also a feature move, but as you can see from what's highlighted, it's using 
two of my coordinate points as the two-way and the four-way. Then, once I have everything, or, or have the cover located to the surface, I can use a pattern move, a pattern rigid move, to get all four of those coordinate points located to the pins. Uh, now, what I've got now is I can just change what's active and what's inactive and s model both configurations. However, uh, there's an easier way to do it. Uh, here is model variance up in the model creation part of the ribbon menu. So I'm going to click on that. And this is where your where your dialog box starts. Uh, we don't have any moves, tolerances, or measures, and we only have one column. So first I'm going to add the moves, tolerances, and measures by selecting this button, and then I can pick them out of the model navigator. So here's my original move which I'm going to use for one variant, and the proposed new moves for the new variant. I can also select measures if I'm only interested in certain measures with specific variants. Um, I can select GDNT as well. So here's my rows. Uh, the first thing I want to do with this column is I want to be able to change the, change the label, so I'm going to right click and rename. We're going to call this current design. And I'm going to right click and I've got an edit description choice in my menu. So I'm going to give myself a couple of words to remind myself uh, how that's put together. Uh, you can see it's got a check box that is checked for the cover to base move and the proposed cover to base and the pattern rigid move boxes are empty. Now let's set up our second variant. I'm going to select this column. I'm going to click on Copy Variant. So here it is, it's copied, so let's fix this up so we're getting our second variant. I am going to re rename this to Proposed, and I'm going to rename the description to uh, Four Pins Pattern Move. Uh, now I just check boxes to indicate that I don't want to use the covered base move. That needs to be inactive, but I do want to use these other two. So now that I've got instructions on what, what's activated and what's deactivated, I can apply that variant. And now if we look at the model navigator, covered base is inactive and proposed cover to base and pattern rigid are both active. So I can close this and run that model. There we go. So I'm going to nominal build. We're going to run the analysis. All right, let's look at flushness number one. Uh, you can see that's these two uh, surface points here and how well they align. And this is showing that we have a distribution in between the upper and lower spec limits. And my number one contributor is that uh, pattern rigid move with all four holes and all four pins.
the second flushness measure is really similar. Um, so uh, what we've done here is we take an existing CAD, we've added some coordinate points to represent our new geometry, and I have set this up so we can switch back and forth between these. Imagine if we had uh, four different variants that we wanted to study and it, this was more complicated. Uh, if I want to go back to current design, I can apply variant and now I'm back in the starting configuration. Thank you for watching. You can go to 3dcs.com for additional information.